All right, you're good to go back. 20 cars, 20... 20, 20 cars. Protecting the, the non-existent... Do you even need a guy to protect a, a, a engine shove, locomotive yeah, shove? Yeah, technically we're shoving through the tender, so you, you've got your brake and the riding hump, on the You know, the, the nice, the 10%. Well, I mean, this is this is fine. Oh, wait, this hold is... on, hold on. Are we, are we lined? Yeah, we are lined, okay. You better be lined. I'm sending wait, it. Wait, no, man. we're this not lined. The... Uh, hold this on. is the Kenosha. Figure it out. Yeah, figure no, it out. The, oh, that's figure right. We bought the class figure seventy. We did it. We did a run. You gotta slow down, Kenosha. Fig figure it out. Kenosha. Figure it out. Kenosha. Ah! Kenosha. You're too fast, Kenosha. I'm gonna flick the switch. It worked. I thought we needed cordwood cars. Yeah, but Didn't I we? just oh. got the switch now. Oh, okay, beautiful. It's fine. Do you have a hitch? I thought you were trying you to throw a, the first one. Pin? I don't know. You're, I'm Which? not the brakeman. Well, I, you're going so don't. fast. Well, this this is the right. speedy boy. Hand is this in. This is the Let's boy go. of legend. You gotta push this car into the rest, apparently. Okay, that's right. fine. We're good. Don't that one. This engine feels like it's been so long since I played with the Class 70 and railroads online, and it's so it's so familiar yet so foreign to me because I mean I've got the the modernized Class 70 346 is the engine we're rebuilding right now at the museum. It's on, up for its 15 year rebuild, but. That's the one you bought for like twelve hundred dollars or whatever. That was the... right. Right. Yeah. I wish. Yeah. They bought it for I think it was a thousand bucks. Maybe it was twelve hundred. Somewhere yeah. in there. Back in the nineteen fifties. Uh, the uh, the lumber company it was working for after it had been sold off the Rio Grande, uh, like burnt down or something, and so they uh, they pretty much sold off everything that was salvageable, and then uh, the other engine from the museum, RGS twenty, went and picked it up and towed it to towed it to the Rio Grande for them to tow it to the, the museum back when it was in Alamosa. So. You were talking about Railroads Online, the engines are named after like um, what their names were. For example, the Montezuma was but named... But not the, this one. <laughs> but not the Class 70. So the Class 70, that was the, the manufacturer's designation. It was a... No. The, oh, that was okay. the Rio Grande's designation for this. The Rio Grande has a, like... I always appreciate their designations because they make a lot of sense. The class 70 it means that it's a 70,000 pound locomotive. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, so it and weighs, later it weighs 70,000 pounds. Just just the engine itself, not the tender, but yes. Right. Um, and later when they modernized and became the Denver and Rear Grand Western, they changed the classification to make even more sense in my mind, where they call it a C19, which was the modernized, more boiler pressure, a little bit more power. Is it pull 19,000 pounds? Is that what that is? It's a consolidation 280 okay. that pulls 19,000 pounds. Yeah, that makes sense. So I, I'm, I'm just, here. I'm, I'm with you. I followed. It made sense. It's super easy, whereas a bunch of other railroads didn't make that stuff make any sense whatsoever. Um, so it's a, it's a nice little system. The, the actual manufacturer's designation, I want to say, is the 10-26E. A 10 tells you it has 10 wheels. 26 tells you that the piston uh, diameter is 16 because it's divided by two and then you add three, I what? think. What? Yeah, it's what? so stupid. The Baldwin makes no sense. Don't listen to them. They're a bunch of drunks. Uh, this, so 26 this divided by two is 13. Says, it says the Baldwin Locomotive Works, Burnham, Perry, Williams & Co., number 4919-1880, Philadelphia, USA. 49, 19, I mean, that's probably, that was probably a, one of the class 70s, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. Um, that, that means that was the 4,919th engine they made, is that what that is? Yes, total, yeah. Like of 346. this type, though? No, total. Oh, just total. Um, like that was 346, which is uh, one of the class 70s, but modernized. Her builder's plate, which I have a replica of in the back of all of my, uh, my actual face cam stuff, fun fact. Um, is 5712 in 1881. So they made 800 locomotives between this one and uh, and 346, which was then 406. How many but... locomotives do you think Baldwin made as a company total before they Oh, disappeared? goodness. Like uh, 10,000? I'm sure. More than oh, 10, God, it's more than that. So th there's, um, there's, there's a good litmus test. They made a big, powerful, and kind of special locomotive that still exists, I want to say in the 20s or maybe the 30s, that is the Baldwin 60,000. Because they 60, built 60,000 steam locomotives in by the 20s or 30s. Um, and it still exists, I believe, at the Franklin Institute. Really big, honking, crazy locomotive that was like a, a special demonstrator of new technology, and none of it worked. Uh, so nobody ever really ran it. So it ended up in the museum. Um, but, but they made more beyond that, I mean, for the next 20, 30 years, although probably a lot less. So I don't know, probably less than 100,000, but... More than 60,000, tell you that much. And that are was you, just Baldwin. Are you full regging it right now? This is all we yep. got? 
I think uh, I think the class 70 is still on the old speed cap, which is wow. uh, it's got an engine, which speed is a bit cap. of a bummer. So how fast? Okay, so we have a bunch of engines now. We've got the class 70, we've got the Montezuma, we've got the Tweet C. Uh, I mean, we've got theoretically, if you were to look at all the locomotives and railroads online, what's like theoretically the fastest based on old school? I mean, my guess would be Eureka, the the 440. The Eureka is actually probably just the speediest. Yeah, uh, the, the real Eureka. I this switch, by the way. Right, the real Eureka uh, was clocked at doing 45 miles an hour. Right. Um, once in the modern day, and they say they said the only reason they couldn't go faster was because the there were no baffles in the tender, because that was the old tender design, and so the water was sloshing around like mad and trying to throw them off the track. You know what so I just the, realized? I just realized what? we can still spawn cordwood. Oh, it's fine. You just you just gonna load the train on the fly? Well, no, but I think to speed up our life and not play Loading Simulator 25,000, oh, we, we, we just drive there and just drive and then there load and the just, cars. And just, and you know, boom, 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 boom. I can live with that. We, we loaded the cordwood at the uh Yeah, we went depot. to the they cordwood more place, so I totally forgot that that isn't patched out. But that really does save us. They, they, they so badly need to upgrade industries in this game. Like, by this point, we should be able to spend our money upgrading industries. Because I would gladly spend money to upgrade industries so it's like one push loads the whole car, you know? Right. Gladly. Yeah. Because that's just, it's just a time saver. There's no benefit to it otherwise. Right. It's snowing, by the way. All right, so you're uh, just going to drive by nice and slow, and I will just spam the cordwood button as you drive by and hopefully be able to... All right, to that sound, sounds legit. Get, get the loads going. Yeah. I will say the uh, the real class 70 it doesn't waddle quite like that. I mean it does waddle left and right because it's, it's got, got a really short blind drivers rod. though, right? Like it's middle blind drivers, but the the big thing is the main rod is super short. That's the rod from the uh, the cylinder from the wrist pin all the way down to the second driver that actually provides the power to the wheels. It's super short, so the aspect ratio, how much it goes up and down, is a lot compared to how much it goes forward and back. So you get all this momentum okay, okay, up and down, and it'll start waddling. Wouldn't a short rod be worse in terms of force because you'd need more force to push it? Because the steeper the angle, like sign of the angle, you're going to get that much force actually going to move the wheel rather than... So you yes, but not when you compare it to the wheel itself, because the the bigger you make the wheel relative to your force, um, the more chat like the less advantage you have. So making it move further in relation to the actual wheel itself means you get more mechanical advantage compared to the wheel. So if it's and so a shorter rod gives you more mechanical advantage, even though it's. I would have thought it well, would have been a so, longer I mean, one. Well, so I mean, you don't it. you don't have you don't have any more advantage with a shorter main rod versus a longer one. You can go a in terms than of that. Yes, I can. Sorry, I can I apparently spam the, the living crap out of this and just. I I centered my Johnson. Look at that. And it, <laughs> Do you uh, want some cordwood? Oh my god. Okay, so I'm gonna just gonna go. I'm just gonna keep. Like, hold on. I could just. This is great. This is, this saves us like three quarters of the episode time right here. Oh my goodness, God. That's ridiculous. The hey man, it's a cordwood. That's, it's not the fountain of youth. It's the fountain of cordwood. We, we need. We got cordwood needs, man. We got. We got needs. This is. This is. This is the best patch to railroads online. Right. Yeah. This saves us all. The, you know what? They don't need to add. Actually, they don't need to add yeah. better cranes. Okay, you might need to slow down. I can't keep up. That. <laughs> well, maybe. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, they don't need to. They don't need to add uh, add faster cranes. You see, keep this in, so we could just load, you know, proper, right? That's brilliant. Yeah, this is a lot. This is a huge time. You know how we would still be on like the first two cars. At this we would point. literally be still on the first two cars. Yeah. yeah, this is we're not we're not cheating, guys. We're still we're still. Man, if we ran the tweetsy, this episode would have been done in fifteen minutes. Just like zip yeah, I know, there and right? back. Yeah. Well, we had to get the class 70. We were behind on numbers, right? So we, we we're did. on to 21, we and we had the Tweetsies 34. So now we're up to 45, which is... No, cool. 55, No, 55, right? 55. Math. Right, yeah, no yeah. math is hard, dude. I'm like... Dude, that's... I became an engineer, so I didn't have to do math. Yeah, right? Excel, man. Excel, Excel, Excel saves, yeah. saves lives. It's really foggy, this episode. <laughs> I know, it's weird. It, like, the weather's set random. Uh, we do have the day-night cycle still enabled. I know I had some people saying, you know, if you want to turn it off for YouTube, that's fine. We just started the episode at the beginning of the day. We changed the time to the beginning of the day. Yeah, we so started. we'll see so, if it descends into nighttime. Yeah, so if we're too I slow. I guess I got to throw the train off the cliff because, I mean, it's day shift and we got to be incompetent. Bro, We've you're probably going to rock so off far. the cliff with just the way that this thing is. Been... I, I'm going to I'm gonna send it and see what happens. So, yeah. you know, 
It's fine. I guess I the should get on the first forward car, so if you lose the tender or the engine, I can just break. <laughs> you can get some break. That's probably for the best. I can but, you know, if we wreck the Kenosha oh, on its is... inaugural run, I mean, that's just par for the course. I really should be just, like, absolutely hammered on whiskey right now, which is unfortunate. I'm not in the, the spirit of the evening today. But, <laughs> but you got you to gotta take your whiskey, you got to put it in the glass, swish it around, and throw it away. And oh, then, dude, I've seen that guy. You see that? Dude, that guy dude, is... Dude, I love that video. I, I he's watched nuts. that, I, and I was explaining it to my fiancé, and I was like, you have to realize, like, people think it's a, a meme or a joke. This guy is deadpan he's serious. He's dead like, serious about is, how you drink Scottish whiskey. That is his whiskey. profession, is professional whiskey tasting. He, like He is he a is, whiskey sommelier. Yeah, like, he that is, is his thing. Yeah, he is very serious about everything he says. Like, he puts the, the glass right into his nose, like, 100% <laughs> legit. Hello. Yeah. Good morning. How are you? You don't want to quote nice, knock it thanks. back like a cowboy, you know. You gotta, don't you gotta put your finger like in the pitcher to sense the water temperature. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that video. Scotch is good, man. I'm, I'm a fan, but I'm not that much of a fan. I'm not, I'm not freaking out. I like out a about good that, whiskey. Like, if there's a good whiskey, yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm enough of a whiskey connoisseur that I have um, marble uh, stones in my freezer. Oh, nice. Um, whiskey stones. Don't yeah, dilute whiskey that stones. shit. Yeah. So, like, that, oh, I'm enough oops. of a connoisseur where, because if you put an ice cube in it, the ice cube melts and throws off the flavor. So, right. I do have proper whiskey stones that you just put them in. They keep your drink cool, but they don't that's change the, to the do flavor. It. Right. So, that's I mean, my, that's like my extent a... of whiskey drinking, you know? Some people add a little water to make it, you know, change the balance a little bit, and you can get more flavors brought out that way. I tend to just go neat. If it's the summer, I'll go with ice, but... I, I, I like to favorite. put in a, a, a splash of water. I think the connoisseur guy said you want 30% water is what he said. So <laughs> Yeah, thir thirty. I think it was 35% was the ABV you wanted. Yeah, something like Take that. Take it down, you know. Dude, tone, wait, it's foggy again. Yeah, what is whiskey. this weather? What the? Uh, we just need to see. Although this bridge looks really see. cool in the fog. It, would. it does. My favorite stupid whiskey thing is, uh, is railroader related. On my 21st birthday, uh, I had a great friend of mine. He passed away a couple years back. A great guy from the museum, a uh, guy named Fred. And uh, he's actually lettered 491's cab is named after him because he was a guy that worked for the Rio Grande for 42 years. Sweetheart, nice guy, hard worker, uh, and just really funny dude to be around. And I wanted, a, I wanted a shot of whiskey with Fred on my birthday, on my 21st birthday. Right. And, and he asked, well, hey, man, you know, what, what are we shooting? And I said, oh, I don't know. How about we shoot some Jameson? And he goes, nah, man, that's sipping stuff. It's just like you, you, you've characterized the railroader as a man in that moment that, no, you can't shoot Jameson. You can't. You can't do that. That's the sipping stuff. I need to grab the class 48. You need to, I guess. Oh, I need to get out of the way. Right. Okay. Um, no, because we, need, we need the class we've 48. Night shift? Yeah, we've entered night shift. No, oh, we need goodness. the class 48 on the other end. Uh, okay. Well, I'll start putting a fire in it because I'm just, on this end of the yeah, you universe. Just, if you back up, let me just make sure you're lined in here. That comes in that way. You're coming in this way. You're backing up there. Yeah, you can back up with your locomotive um, for a while, and I'll tell you to stop, and we might be able to just run around oh perfect this is this is okay. great this night op stuff is gonna i'm i'm we're night switching now man night switching uh, i've put a fire in the class 48 and i've got its headlights turned on okay um let's see what is the client render distance on headlights okay it is horror game levels it Dude, is I'm about my 200 to see 200 feet oh that's right there's a lantern yeah it I almost forgot it doesn't help <laughs> mlg mlg yeah, oh, we probably man. needed the class 48 in front because I don't think we're going to be able to get it around once you... It's, uh, it's I don't fine. know if we have a big enough line. Although we can split your train in half. So just you just back up slowly. I might tell you <laughs> to stop and then we might have to split you, put you into two different sidings. Because we have four okay. sidings here, right? So Right. Let's break the train in half. I think nine fit in those sidings. Yeah, so. I think we have to do two, two stacks of nine and then we can run the class 48 around. You can turn on the turntable and play the minigame. Normally I can see your floating player character, but I can't see that because it's so dark and your lantern apparently does not render. Um, what time is it? Let me just check here. Is there, you, is there so. a way to gameplay here? It's, uh, it's uh, 1927. Nighttime. Oh God, we're going to be. It's, this is 7.30 right now? Are you kidding me? This is, this is night. It, it, it's, it's winter hey man, still, right? Shut up, okay? You, you, live, you live so far south. You're so like appreciative of it. 
Dude, I live, I in, live in the north. For you know what? I lived 7.30 in is for like... nighttime for us, okay? <laughs> I've lived in Seattle for like 23 years or 24 years of my life. Yeah, it gets um, dark I'm used at 7:30. to the, the 4 p.m. sun goes down. I'm yeah. pretty sure in Seattle's the winter, the in the same. winter, man, yeah. the sun is down at like 4:30, 5 o'clock. Yeah, Toronto and, and Seattle are probably on the They're same. They're pretty close. Uh, yeah. Which whichever north south one is called longitude, latitude. Uh, I don't know. Latitude. Yes. I don't remember, man. One of them. Study hard in school, kids. If you have a steam engine, right, you turn off all the brakes. Okay. So you have no okay. brakes on it. You have no steam pressure running in it. You turn the reg to zero. You turn the, the Johnson bar to zero, right? So there's no steam moving into the cylinders. It'll eventually stop with friction, won't it? Right, yeah. How long would that take, do you think? Is it a really long, like, if you're at speed, that'll be forever? I slow? mean, momentum, momentum's a thing. It probably wouldn't be forever, but it would be a decent long time. Um, th there's a decent, like, th the plane bearings and everything... People like Timkin shills call them a uh, a friction bearing, right? And and that's that's a lie from Timkin. Like yes, there's more friction when you're trying to start because you're at static friction, right? You have to overcome that versus a roller bearing where you're always um, in rolling friction. But once you get the uh, the train started and once it's moving and you got oil wicked up and everything, the coefficient of friction with a roller bearing and a plane bearing are about the same. Yeah, but I mean like the locomotive itself, like the locomotive, right? Like the, right. The, all that's the... what the locomotive has. And oh, you've you got mean rods like there's there's other, yeah. there's friction bearings on all the piston rods and stuff too. Like that's where they all they're all connected with just a friction bearing. Well, so the rods not so much. The rods have a floating. I mean, it depends on the era, uh, because it always does. But usually these days they have a floating bronze bushing um, or brass in it. Right. That uh, that is actually like really kind of a sloppy fit. That's uh, oh hey look there's all these lights now that's fun yeah I got I got back and front lights I'm really <laughs> rocking that must that must be nice I'm the yeah, actual I'm yard this makes sense this is the engine that you'd actually use for this because you can right. see that's 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 why they had two lights on it oh, got it but it is so vibey at night I do I'm like just this. I'm just thinking like okay so if you take a car and you let off the gas of a car it'll slow down pretty right. quick right, right. Uh, um, engine steam engine probably a lot faster I mean it, oh, lots a car. of little things could. Or not faster, but it would stay running for a lot longer. Oh, like um, it would stay because there's less less moving stuff. Well, it's it's mostly because there's just so much momentum, so much weight. Right. Like that, you got to stop all that mass, and it, it doesn't like to stop. So, um, case in point, I've definitely allegedly seen a locomotive um, that uh, <laughs> was let to roll free once, and uh, yeah, it was going two mile an hour, but it uh, it sure wanted to go through the back wall of the shop. It just kept it didn't, going, but it uh, it really it really wanted to. So, what 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 in the railroads online is going on here? Did you is screw this up client already? side? Is this client side? The turntable is turning out from underneath the locomotive. The oh, locomotive is oh, stuck is in too. stuck Look in position. That. Well, that's interesting. Um, Keep turning. Oh yeah. Okay, well, well that's a, that's interesting. That's a, that's a new one. This this that's is neat. an accurate ne historical never seen, never simulation seen of before. railroading in the American Midwest. Like this is how they your did brakes it. work though. I've noticed. Uh, yeah, now that they're no longer on the turntable because this they're the in the brakes, dirt the because the turntable work. rotated it's, out from underneath it. That's uh, that's that's a vibe, I guess. Honestly, if I was a train company and I had to deliver to the smelter on a regular basis, I would be like, guys, you need to fix your your unload. Move, move your unload. We are not okay. unloading here. We are going to unload in a pile next to that, and you can deal with it. Yeah, I mean, it's cordwood, so it, it is stored, in fact, in a pile. So You know what we could do, actually, just to be super meta? We could extend the switches all the way out straight, right? And then just have a bunch of, like, straight tracks next to it and just re-rail cordwood cars onto them and use it like an elevator, so you unload to the cordwood car, which unloads to the next cordwood car. I've I've done that on a save before. You yeah. transload between cars. And, and then, then it's just like, oh, done. Conveyor belts. Get out of here. Alright. Ride, ride in the kick. Whee! They are, that is a fast kick. That is a very fast kick, and it ran me over. That's fine. You're dead. I've been, I've, I've died today. Yeah. We'll have, we'll have a service for you later, uh, but we still okay. need you to switch out these cars. Well, I mean, that is the railroad way. Yeah. Right, Timmy, well, I'm just let this unfortunately, foul. your father yeah, died today. He was crushed by fine. a car. So naturally, Violence. you're going to have to work the rest of his shift. 
precisely. How did but you know I, But I'm so six. Well? Oh, it's fine, Tibby. Remember that scene in Snowpiercer where like the train was was driving? Have you you've seen Snowpiercer, right? I have not seen Snowpiercer. Oh, good. You need to really which that's, which that's is like a, a crime as somebody who does things. That's with trains another train movie. I don't want to ruin told. it for you. Then you got to really watch Snowpiercer and really okay. experience. Uh, the it, very, uh, the is very that another end... one that I need to be violating general rule G for? Well, at the, the, the very end, see, because my, my biggest question being an engineer was, uh, you know, you have a train that supposedly runs forever to to combat global warming. That is the premise. Um, <laughs> There's so many holes in this already. Yeah, so like, so like basically the premise without ruining the story is like, you know, the planet's frozen over... And they have this. And trains can solve it, right? It. And and the only people left on the entire planet are stuck on this train that runs 365 days a year, uh, on a track that goes all the way around the world. Um, I want I want to know how that maintenance schedule works out. Right. So there's so there's, uh, there's track maintenance schedule is, is the first problem that I thought of. Second is yeah, the MOW, locomotive, yeah. locomotive maintenance. But they did explain at the end of the movie how the locomotive maintenance works. So I really it, you really need to watch it and just just really experience that <laughs> that okay. that lovely piece of knowledge yeah it's great um, uh, i'm excited to learn whatever that is maybe it's like the counter thrust from unstoppable uh no it's you know. better i promise you better, this is it's better. better it's better than the counter oh, thrust. I, I, I don't even want to ruin it just watch snowpiercer and then uh, we'll talk about it and you'll not the tv on. show though the movie there's a movie, the movie. and then there's a tv okay. show bring bring them ahead I'm loading the first one, I'm loading the second one. But yeah, I know you have terrible movie nights with your Third with your one. sponsors, and you should really have a Snowpiercer. <laughs> Snowpiercer added to the list. Yeah, yeah gonna, it's, it's pretty that. good. It's, it's uh, yeah. So yeah, plug plug for the UCB train crew. I mean, uh, yeah, it's gonna a, join it's the good. channel. We, yeah. uh, we hang out, it's fun. Con shows up sometimes, every once in a while. I, I do, sometimes. It's I'm like a, an, an fun, honorary fun member. Apparently, with the Unreal 5 update, uh, you can have 64 players actually in the game now. Oh yeah, like, that'll just, that'll be. I have a pin still. Not just 16 anymore. So, I have a Lincoln pin. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that that sounds like chaos is actually attempting to play this game with 64 people. But, you know what uh, we we should do though if we're gonna do that we should get 64 players and start on a completely empty world and, and see how long it takes. <laughs> well, no, not even not even that, but just start an empty world. And like everyone buys a Betsy or something, or you know, give everyone a Betsy with money or whatever or something like that. Some engine combo, and everyone's racing as their own team to get track and go from some place to some place, pick up the goods and <laughs> like, come back. T teams of three or four yeah, or something. Yeah, everyone's so like building like their own lines of track. Sixteen just, railroad companies. Right, and they're all impeding each other's lines and stuff. And like, who cares? If only there was some way to make that work, like actually, because. It, You'd get to the logging camp, and that would be fine. But then you would try and build to the sawmill or something. Bring and everyone head. would be just... And then yeah. everyone would be stealing everyone else's commodities. Like... Yeah. Yeah, that would be... And then, like, the spawn yard. I mean, the, the interchanges. I mean, it would be nuts. That would be funny, though. It It'd would be. fun be. to try. Maybe stay in the cab there, friendo? Like... Oh, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I was checking the pin. It's fine. That's all. It's fine. Is it... Are you, are you pinned? You oh, checked pinned. it? It's and fine. Like... I okay. need you to put your so, hand in there though and lift it up to make sure we really. Oh okay. Yep. Yep. Maximize the danger. If you were, if you're doing that in real life, like the the, I don't know, I don't know what's called the housing of my pin, is like it would eventually hit the housing of your pin, like we just right. did. Did, did what? I can I. This, no this no is this is this is no this no works. we're fine. No we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. It'll probably fix itself with this next switch. But anyway, like, It'll probably, you would have to yeah. literally jam your hand in there, hold the link up, and then yank your hand out as soon as the link's in the slot, but not before the two plates smash together. Correct, which is why they were so dangerous. Jeez, that's so stupid. Yo. Oh, see, we're back Okay, on. look, look, nothing Switches happened. Pay it. no attention to those 100 Dude, that's, that's scarred like ties. Literally, that's literally the dumbest, like, thing ever. That would destroy your hand so many there's, times. There's a reason why they outlawed them, so... And you guys used, you guys used, like, you know, bars, little, little wooden sticks. No, uh, they, people died like men, so they just stuck their hand in there. They just lost their hand. It's, yeah, it's fine. Everyone then, in the comments of my was... couplers video was like, why wouldn't you just use, like, a stick or something? It's like, no, no, I don't no. know. J Jimmy <laughs> No Hands doesn't use sticks. 
Jimmy No Hands doesn't use sticks exactly. Yeah, Jimmy No Hands thinks sticks are for just are for like, the children. Uh, just like Deaf Bob doesn't use earplugs. Yeah, exactly. I took I took a DB meter to the shop the one day when we were running back in my, my first time at the museum. And in the cab, the ambient in the cab of the steam engine's 85 dB. Yeah, and like a jet means, engine's like 130, isn't it? Well, yes, 130, 140, but it's a logarithmic scale, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. No, Lots I... of things. But 85, if you're exposed to 85 for eight hours, you are getting uh, hearing damage, permanent hearing damage. Yeah. So it's like, okay, that's just the ambient at the cab, and then you operate the brake valves, and it hits like a hundred, and it's like, okay, you really should be wearing earplugs in this if you. What's would it like at the hearing. piston on the piston exhaust? Huh? It, it's pretty loud, but it's not as loud because it's coming out the stack, um, right, far away from you. The safety valve's super loud, blowdown's super loud, um, uh, brake valves. I mean, the air, literally, the automatic air brakes are super loud. Um, so that's the whole thing. I don't. We don't need to unpin for this one, do we? I mean, I guess you well, could just. Matter, kick, I'm just shoving all the way out onto yeah. the, and then yeah. I have to back out, let you pass, and then I have to. Get Whistle onto super the... loud, bells decently loud, piercing, but like, yeah. So, I remember catching flack uh, back in the day for wanting to wear earplugs, and it's like, it's just safety culture, man. And and thankfully, it's so great now. Like, everyone's super supportive, and it's totally different, but. Um, like earplugs, like simple thing, like, oh, you're, you're a wuss if you use those. And it's like, you're literally losing your hearing forever. If you're not using these right now, like, yeah, what are I you mean, doing? Luckily, in automotive, I never experienced that. I mean, maybe back in the day it was worse, but in automotive, I never I, experienced sure. that. Like yeah. everyone on the floor, man, it, like, even if you walk into the building and you're in like an office area, it's safety glasses, steel toed shoes. Like it's just, right. it's just, it's just, if you're in the building, you're wearing steel toed shoes and safety glasses. If you're in any sort of major area where there's forklifts, like all the forklift areas in every plant I marked were marked. There were walkways right. that you would walk on if you were a person, like these big green painted walkways. If you were off the walkway, you had to have a vest on, like a fluorescent vest. You know, right. like that we was had, just- We had the same thing at BNSF. Yeah, it was just the standard the and like, I never really experienced anybody not following that. Um, and then when I worked at a welding shop for a while, still an automotive, but like robotic welding of like subframes and cradles and stuff. Oh, that's gotta be. Everybody cool. had full coveralls on because if you walk by a robot welding cell and some weld splatter comes shooting out, it is little balls of hot molten metal that if they land on your skin, they will cause you third degree burns because it will stick to your skin and just burn right through it. Yep, you don't so, want that. Yeah, so we would have coveralls, and like there would. I remember I got one on the arm, and it burned right through the coveralls. It just because it's like a little little molten ball, and it'll cool down eventually. But like you know, it burns through your coveralls first, and then by the time it touches your skin, it's cold enough that it won't burn you. But like it's right. Uh, yeah, they used to have it all yeah, the time. Yeah, I had uh, we had a welder that worked at the museum for a while. Uh, cool dude, like super nice guy, great welder. Uh, but I have never seen a human being take off a boot faster oh, yeah, than weld, that man. Weld ball went down the boot. Weld slag down the boot. Yeah. I mean, like he was sitting there welding the, one time. And I was just walking around the corner to see what he's doing, and then uh, the next thing I know, his boot hit the front of the roundhouse that was forty feet away. Just yep. like pff, threw the thing off, and it was like, what was that? Like, oh yeah, I had weld slag fall down it. It's like, yeah, when oh. I worked at when I worked at a weld shop, I used to like we used to do our boots up, but we would keep the top lace undone so you could just yank it off your foot if you really had to yeah just totally just throw it yeah, like it was never tight enough you, to like prevent you it from doesn't just... seal right yeah because yeah. otherwise otherwise you get anything down your shoe and you're undoing laces like you're that's just yeah that's that's not ideal do we just have it set to just snow like i feel like we've had just snow as the random weather so. like we had we had thunderstorm no weather once, type I guess, random but... Okay, I mean, that's... Oh, okay. interesting. We've got clear skies, partly cloudy, sand dust storm. What is that? I'm going to set it to sand dust storm. What is, what is that? This is a sand... Oh, this is a sand dust storm. Oh my god, bro! This is this is sand dust storm, by the way. I know they're very do, common do, in Colorado. Uh, Yeah, it's an accurate simulation of American Midwest railroading. Uh, that's a neat vibe. Yeah, maybe maybe desert map? That'd be fun. Get some some dust storms. Sandstorms. Immediately into a take, take a me back to middle into school. a blizzard though. That's the uh, I mean, you know, hot cold. Yeah. 
It happens. Did you start ringing my bell? Maybe. Because I didn't. Yeah, I pulled it once. You needed that extra tractive effort, bro. It does help. It does help. Yeah. yeah. Let's people know you're going fast. Yep. Okay, so you have for. a whistle on a steam train. We've never actually talked about this. You have a whistle on a steam train. Why the heck do you need a bell? Uh, it's a different kind of warning. They're bo they're both just what audible do you, warnings. What do you warn people with the bell? What is that? That's for? Uh, the, like standard procedure. Is you're coming into a station, you're running through a station. It's occupied station platform. You're coming into a station, stop. Uh, going through a grade crossing. Uh, bell. Yeah, but wouldn't you blow the, the whistle to stop at a station? Like you you hit the well, whistle. you do when you when you stop. But as you're coming into the stop, you know you like. Ring, ring the bell, the bell. And approach, yeah. In case the people bell, can't bells hear the are... giant steam locomotive. Well, so the, the thing about giant steam locomotive, and like, there's an actual thing about this, and the reason why we have a bell, and this is one of the videos that I've been wanting to do, is that bells are actually an unnatural sounding thing that, that really cut through everything else because they don't function like any other thing in nature. Right, I remember that National jo D National Geographic documentary on steam trains, where they were like, look at the steam train in the wild, hear its chops going. <laughs> well, know? so the, the thing about it, the thing about it though, Con, is that every sound that occurs, naturally produced whatever, whistles do this too, have what's called an overtone series. Okay. Where the, the pitch of the sound, say it's 440 hertz, that's an A. Yeah, on the musical scale, the orchestra's tuned to it, whatever. Every note like that, produced by a whistle, produced by whatever, they have an overtone series, and it, and it's always a major overtone series in nature. Almost always. I'm sure there's something that someone will prove me wrong in the comments, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. And as you go up the overtone series, you get multiples of that frequency that occur as part of the sound. So you'll get the octave at 880, you'll get the, the major or the perfect fifth above that up to a major third. So that every time you're playing one note, you're actually technically playing a major chord, the happy sounding chord on a guitar or a piano or whatever. And so everything that naturally produces sound, my voice right now, the way you talk, the, the, like, the overtones might be more, they might be less, depending on what it is. And that's what makes in different instruments sound different from each other. But they all have that positive major overtone series. Gotta get this switch. Bells have a minor overtone series. And a minor overtone series, rather than having the major third, has the minor third. Yeah, which, which sounds, is, which sounds is, weird to the human ear a little it bit. It sounds unnatural. Completely sounds, unnatural. So you sad. hear a you hear a bell, it sounds sad, but it, it doesn't sound right. It's unsettling. And, and that's, that's why, why the it makes four a great chords warning are device. always major, major, minor, major. Right. Right. Every every you've you've seen that like that. This is not even like a joke. It's like the, the most, axis of awesome. Yes. Yeah. Most songs are written with only like four chords, and it's the same four. Pa I used to play piano and stuff too, and, and orchestra instruments, and actually like I played tuba and trombone and baritone. I, and I'm learning this about Khan. I played a, a little bit person. of trumpet. Was a music person, which means That's my fun. embouchure is really strong. I have strong yeah, lips. Look at um, that. Yeah. Because to play yes. to play brass instruments, you need to vibrate your lips like brrr, so. Like I have strong lips as a result. Yeah, exactly. Was that your was that your butthole or was that your lips? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm I'm gonna vote butthole. That was his butthole. Making, making that. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Um. But with with uh with now I'm thinking of buttholes. I can't even remember. What else. <laughs> What, I was, what we were talking about. Yeah, but yeah. How's, how's your uh, how's your buttholes on, Bashir Khan? It's perfect. It's are, we, perfect. are we going there? Super going there? super okay. reinforced. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. But no, you have to like you have to vibrate your lips to like play brass instruments and stuff. But um, if you play like a song, the, it, you can use pretty much like I think it's like it's minor and then the harmonic major and then because every minor chord has an associated major scale. It's it's I don't One, know how much. One five my, six four. Yeah. Yeah, there but then go. if you play that's, them, that's it, so works. when you play the third minor chord, um, if you resolve it to a major, that's what gives your your brain that like happy feeling when it hears happy the minor. Happy chemicals. Yeah, yes. it heal, hears the minor and then resolves it to a major, and your brain's like, ah, oh, that's satisfying. Whereas if you like stop on the minor, your brain will get that itch where it's like you need to resolve right. this. Like it needs to it, be. It's a part of Western music tradition. Yeah, that, that whole thing and that that culture and language of harmony and how it's actually set up in music. Yeah. And, and there's, there are reasons that music theory is a thing. And it's very interesting if you really want to get into the nerdy stuff. But uh, 
as as Captain Barbosa says, the, the the guy the code be more what you call guidelines than actual rules. Yeah. But uh, you know, but you there's definitely train a lot whistle, of things. With train it. whistles just need to be all diminished fourths, and then you'll always. That would be. You'll there always is, hear. There's some weird ones out there. Um, most train whistles end up playing like a nice, pretty chord, like but ma minor chord, major chord, depending on how many chimes they have. Um, I've found a couple from some of my friends of I that like looking around at whistles and stuff. There's one that's I think off the Virginian Railroad that's a three chime that just plays a power chord like it's rock and roll and it's just like the most bizarre sounding cool whistle ever. <laughs> but they did all sorts of stuff. But the point is the overtone series on the whistle, regardless, is still a major overtone series. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, but the bell is the minor one, and so it provides a different warning, and it and it's a little bit more jarring where a whistle in the distance might sound somewhat pleasing, uh, particularly if you're a rail fan type person. So the bell serves a slightly different role as a warning device than the, the whistle does. We just need to have a screaming speaker on the front of every steamboat photo. So it just like they, yells at them like, ah, ah they have, ah! they have looked into all sorts of silly things to try and get people to be aware that a train's coming. Believe me. Oh, uh, it does, I saw like, a video the other day where someone stopped at a rail crossing. They saw the train coming. They made a full stop and then they inched forward onto the rail crossing and got hit anyway. Even though, it, like, it clearly stopped, they saw the train coming, and they are like, yeah, I'm gonna inch forward anyway, and then, like, but only enough so that the front of their car got clipped. And it's like, what were you doing? Like, what, I, what were you, yeah. You clearly saw the train and stopped, and then you're like, yeah, I'll just go anyway. Like, what the... What, life's hard sometimes, Con, don't it was you know? Really, it was really weird. <laughs> yeah, crossing safety, and, yeah, that's a, that's a whole thing. I mean... I, I made an 82 minute long video about talking about designing crossings and, and things like that a couple, like a couple weeks ago. Uh, just because right, there's so much stop. that goes can, into it. You can stop it on pin. I'll, I'll grab your cars. Okay. All right, you want to hop on the, the cordwood here and... Uh... Oh, I'm parking the, the, the Kenosha at the roundhouse right now. Oh, okay. Because we need to line this into the hump. I thought it was, I mean, you just need to line the one switch. We already went through that switch. Right? Actually, so you know what? Line... We don't need to line this into the hump. We've been uh, we've been here far too long. Shift's over. Throw the keys in the dirt. I'm gonna just leave. Oh, okay. Yep. I mean, I'll just leave it on the table then. Are you back at the t yeah? Right. Perfect. Just All right. It. Shift's over. Shift's Thanks over. for watching, everybody. Yeah. See ya. Later. Later. Shift's over.